Good morning, everyone. It's Kay Kaltoff, and welcome to a Stamp and Chat with Kay. We're gonna do a little bird watching today. We're gonna do um, some crafting with the Free as a Bird bundle. And so, thank you so much for joining me. It's great to see you. I took a little stamping break the last few days. Um, I've been working with product shares, to be specific, and it's been great. I have a, I think every single table in my, um, in in my family room and the other area where I do stamping with my downline members, I think every single table is full of Stampin' Up stuff, all kind of being sorted out and figured out. Unfortunately, there's a few things on back order which which are affecting my product shares. Um, even though I ordered the very first day that I could. I still um, experienced some back orders on some things, so I'm kind of trying to decide exactly what to do about that. I know that I had said that things could be delayed, but I feel so bad for some of you because you're so excited to get your shares. So I don't know, I'm gonna put my thinking cap on and try and figure out here what to do. It's just that it, it just depends how much of your particular share is on back order that is going to determine I think whether or not I send you the bulk of the share and then send the other things um, once they come in it adds quite a bit of expense but I know if it were me and I was waiting for a big everything share with you know all of the papers and all of the embellishments and all of the ribbons I would be so sad not to get it for such a long time so um, my apologies, I just I just haven't quite got that all figured out yet. But hopefully I'll get a lot of shares in the mail on Monday. For sure all the paper shares because I did not experience any back orders with paper so they will be um, ready to mail out on Monday. And for those of you that are wondering about my product shares, be sure to visit my blog at www.stampingtoshare and if you click on any post that's recent, there will be a uh, a little um, picture of ribbons and if you click on that picture it'll take you to the post. I don't actually have pictures up yet of what the shares look like. That's just, it's just I just haven't had time. Um, maybe next week, you know, I don't even know if I'll even do it just because my, you know, I only offer the shares for one month. I may not even, I may not even worry about it because with some things being on back order I doubt that I can even get everything out that I want to. Uh, so anyway, sorry about that, you guys. So I just thought I would update you on that status. Thank you so so much for so many of you joining in today. I have some cards to share. Um, in addition to the free of the as a bird cards that I made, uh, my assistant she um, gave me a few cards to share with you. So that is with the mosaic mood bundle. And so I'm going to share some of those beautiful cards that she created with you. So let me go ahead and flip the camera down and we'll get started. Okay, so here are the cards that my assistant Kim Lundstrom created and she shared with our uh, demonstrator group at our last demo meeting. So I wanted to share those with you. So here is the first one. And I think what she did, well, she used the bundle because you can see the punch here and she's got the, the, the stamps. But she did a lot of fussy cutting to get all of these beautiful pieces cut out with the Mosaic Mood Designer Series paper. I just want to double check to make sure that's the actual name of the paper. Yes, it is. So the paper looks like this. And I'm sure that many of you who are avid crafters, you've been seeing this paper all over Pinterest. It is stunning and gorgeous. And um, every single piece, because it is, has specialty paper, has sort of a shine to it. Um, sort of a glazed, embossed look. It's so beautiful. And so um, these are the cards that Kim shared at our meeting, and I was so tickled that I can share them with you. So you can see here that she used um, a new embellishment, and I'm trying to think, I, I've lost track of actually what's on back order and what isn't, but I kind of have a feeling these are on back order as well. 
but let me go ahead and show you all these beautiful cards. Here's another one, and the reason I like this one so much is she went ahead and she used the ribbon that's part of that uh, product suite. It's got another one of those really sweet um, flower charms that have the rhinestones in. She did do a little fussy cutting here with kindness, and I like the way it opens. She took a strip of the designer series paper and then she cut off the front flap area. And doesn't that look beautiful? Oh my gosh, I have such talented, talented downline members and Kim, my assistant, is just particularly talented. I love her style. Here's another one. And again, she she cut out the thank you and she she took the punch and punched out one of those strips and it just fits perfectly in the punch. You have the, the soft suede at the top and the soft suede at the bottom and then kind of all that tiling through the middle. And I love the ribbon treatment on this and she also um, fussy cut some butterflies and popped those up on dimensionals. It's just stunning, absolutely beautiful. And the next card features the this gorgeous uh, hummingbird again that she fussy cut. And I believe some of these cards were just cased directly from the catalog. But of course, when you're looking at the catalog, nothing seems, you know, it looks extraordinary and wonderful. But when you get it in your actual hands and you see um, exactly the recreation of it, it's really quite, quite stunning. And so here she is with a little, kind of almost like a bird's nest looking um, twine, the way it's wrapped around the sentiment. And then here's another one where she used the tree image in that set. And one of the features of this card that I thought was so beautiful was she took the key, and I believe that is, oh boy, I think it's from the Bird Ballad product suite. I could be wrong though, it could be the Magnolias. I'm just not sure, I don't have all this stuff memorized yet, just forgive me for that. But um, it's just beautiful. So she has the key here. And of course, trees kind of symbolize life. And she's got celebrating another year of happiness here. I see that she used the rope from the sailing, the sailing product suite, the Come Sail Away product suite. And then I don't think she does the inside of her cards, but, but what beautiful outsides, right? And then you can customize the inside based on what your uh, occasion is for. I think this would be a beautiful anniversary card. And the next card looks like this. You can see she just went crazy with this designer series paper and this product suite. It makes me want to get this stamp set. I know, can you believe it? I don't have it yet, but Kim is inspiring me very, very much. And so she used the Subtles embossing folder here in the background. And then she stamped the tree image back here on this um, die cutout. It's just stunning in every way. Another popped up butterfly. Um, some Nature's, I think it's the Nature's Twine. The Nature's Baker's Twine. Um, anyway, and Mint Macaron. So that's tied on to one of the layers. And another one, yes, this is the final one, but it's so beautiful. Um, and again, the star of the show is this designer series paper. It's just fussy cut, and then you just take those beautiful images and pop them onto your cards. And you can use any sentiments that you want to create these beautiful cards that's perfect for birthdays or anniversaries, or you could do weddings. I think this image would just be a gorgeous wedding card. Um, Oh, just so pretty. So thank you so much to my downline member, Kim Lundstrom, for letting me or allowing me to share all of these beautiful cards with you. So I will get those out of the way for right now. And then what I would like to do is bring on the free as a bird bundle. So the free of the bird, the free as a bird bundle includes, um, of course, the stamp set free as a bird. And then it includes the stitched nested labels dies, which look like this. This is a great design. Um, one of the things that I love about this design is that you can create little layers on your cards so easily. For example, in one of the cards that we're going to do today, the one that I um, advertised in advance on uh, Instagram just takes a different size of these nested layers and cut it out and then you just cut it in half and you can make layers behind your layers so 
such a beautiful way to accent your cards. All right. And then, um, of course, this comes as a product suite. So there's quite a few different products associated with this. But one of those products that I'll be using today is the Bird Ballad Designer Series paper. Now, I'm not sure if you know this or not, but Stampin' Up! created this with the uh, idea that we would be using Stampin' Blends to color our birds. So all of the images on, on these uh, particular sheets of designer series papers were actually um, just line images that were then colored with Stampin' Blends. And you can see how, how fun it would be just to recreate these papers, just, I mean, recreate these images just by using your Stampin' Blends and using the designer series paper as your guide, which I think is just lovely. So you have all these different um, designs, these line images that have been cover colored with Stampin' Blends and then turned into designer series paper. I love this feathers one. I've got to think of a way to use a card for the feathers one. So just gorgeous, gorgeous paper, and I love this uh, set of bird cages. That's what I'm going to be using on my card today. And then, of course, um, there's some seagulls and just some more beautiful images. And believe it or not, I've seen people fussy cut these images in this the most stunning manner possible. I can't even fathom fussy cutting something like that. But yes, there are people out there that do that, and it is an amazing skill. So kudos to all of you that can fussy cut things like this. It is just amazing to me. So thank you so much again for joining me. I should share that I will do a giveaway on Monday. So you have all through today, um, Saturday, Sunday to uh, catch this replay. If you're not catching it live, you can always jump in at any time. And if you make a comment, share it on your timeline. I will be doing a giveaway on Monday, which will be... The Magnolia Lane Combo Pack, I'll give you a yard of the, uh, it's kind of like a um, mossy meadow thread. And then, of course, in the Sahara sand, there's this kind of woven ribbon with white edges, and it's really quite lovely. And that is from our Magnolia Lane product suite, but I will be using this mossy meadow thread on one of our cards today. So that is what I'm going to do as my giveaway, a yard of each. And then, of course, um, you will get the cards that we're making today. Well, one of the cards that we're making today. And so let me get all of this out of the way and we'll get started recreating the cards. So the card that we're going to make first is actually this one. So let me show you both cards that we're making today. Oops, I have a little, a little fuzz there. So let me move that out of the way. So these are the cards we're making today. One is done with Stampin' Blends. And I think this looks a little bit like a parakeet. But of course, it it might not be because I don't, I didn't actually Google what a parakeet looks like. I was just playing, and sometimes when you just play, that little bright spot of color just starts. You know, I don't know. It just it just spoke to me, and I started thinking, I just love this bird. And do you know that I designed an entire downline um, training? with these two cards in mind because sometimes we have people in our lives that you know they're leaders they're real bright spots they're they're people that we look up to um they can easily go it alone and just do it on their own and it's just they're they're just amazing there's there's they're those bright bright spots that you see those bright lights but yeah not all of us are like that many of us are more like the chickadees or the sparrows we kind of like to to go in groups and flock together and we sort of like to um you know we sort of maybe don't have a lot of confidence on our on our own we we look to others for guidance um and I don't know, I, I think sometimes, you know, when you think about what it talks about in the Bible, the, I don't think God really talks a lot about parrots or, or parakeets or those bright, bright lights. But he does mention the sparrow many different times. I think like, I can't remember now for sure, but it's like 30 some different times he mentions the sparrows and the sparrows of the field. And so, I don't know, to me, it's like, you know what? We, we may feel a little inadequate, but I just want you to know that every single person and every little sparrow is so important and it's all part of God, 
God's creation. Oh, just makes me so emotional. So I just want you to know that you may not be that leader type person, but everybody in Stampin' Up! has a place, even the sparrows and the chickadees and those of us that just like to flock together. So that was kind of my training or the kind of the gist of it. And I just wanted to share that with you because I'm sure that a lot of you maybe feel a little unconfident, maybe even about your own artwork. And don't worry because all of us are learning. We're all growing at the same time. All right, so we're going to start actually with this card right here. And I have my, um, I wanted to share with you that I used for this one, I did not use the nested labels die. I used the stitch shapes framelets. And I took it and cut it out with watercolor paper. And so here we have, and I have it on my Stamparatus just because it's so easy. So for those of you that don't know this tip, um, you can take your Stamparatus and, and do your cut and then to get that placed to get, you know, like if you want to stamp a bird or, or some image on an oval, you can just insert it back into this and then that becomes your template for using that particular size of a die for, for doing, for using on your Stamparatus for stamping. So I'm just putting the, um, magnet down. And so this was just a piece of scrap watercolor paper that I that I cut out. And and anyway, what I'm trying to say is you can make multiples of this and stamp it the exact same way over and over and over just by having that template. So I actually won't get rid of that template. I'll keep it because it's I have it set up now so that it'll work great for that large oval from the uh, stitch framelit dies. Then because we're going to use our stamp and blends, I am going to take our Tuxedo Black Memento ink, and I will be inking up this um, little bird, which really could be colored to be any kind of a little bird, but we're going to make it a really bright bird, some kind of a tropical bird, I think. So we're going to, I inked it up, and now I'm just going to close it, and I'll press it down. And it looks really good. I don't think I need to do another thing, so it's all ready to go. Um... But if it wouldn't have turned out perfectly, I could re-ink it and do it again, and I would be able to um, make that image a little darker or fix any little areas that maybe didn't get inked perfectly. So now I can take this out of the way. We'll put that Tuxedo Black Memento ink aside, and let me show you what we're going to be using here. So I've got my Stampin' Blends ready. Look at how pretty these colors are. So let me share with you the colors that we're using to color this. We're going to use uh, the Daffodil Delight Combo Pack, which you see right here. We're going to use the Light Old Olive. We're going to use the Light Balmy Blue and the Light Soft Suede. So those are the colors we're going to use. And let me grab my image here. I'm going to start by taking the dark Daffodil Delight and I'm just going to color the top part here of the bird. And I'm going to leave a little space around the eye because it just gives the bird a little more expression if there's a little bit more, of, if there's just the tiniest little bit of white space around the eye. Then we're going to take this lighter um, Daffodil Delight combo and we're just going to add a little bit of the light Daffodil Delight. Again, avoiding that eye area just a little bit to give that bird a little bit more of an expression. And we can go in like that. And then we'll also put a swatch of yellow down here through the bottom. All right, so we've got that done. The next thing we're going to do, you know what, I'm going to add just a little bit of yellow right in here too. The next thing we're going to do is take our green, which is our light old olive, and I'm just going to go in, we're going to color this area. And we'll just bring that around like this. And I think that looks pretty good. Then we'll take the blue. So we've got our, what is this here? Our balmy blue in light, one of our Stampin' Blends. We're just going to color the wing up here 
with that balmy blue. And everywhere it touches the yellow, it gets a little bit green, which adds a little um, contrast and some variation through here. And then go through here, bring that into the tail. And look at how beautiful that's turning out. Now we're going to take our um, soft suede, our light soft suede, just going to add a little something down here to the ground. And then we're going to cut, and I've got the fine tip end of that stamp and blend, and we're just going to color in the beak. And that's it. Our bird, our beautiful bird, is all colored. So let me show you a little bit closer up what that looks like. Isn't that great, you guys? All right, so now what do we do next? Next, we're going to need a scrap of old olive paper, which looks like this, just a scrap, and we're going to take our sprig punch. We're gonna punch out three sprigs. So while I'm doing that, I'll take a quick peek here at the comments. Oh, now that's a great idea. Donna just said she made templates from the cardboard that comes with the designer series paper so that when she is using her stamparatus with the various dies, she's got all of her templates created with the, um, with the designer series paper chipboard, basically. And that gives a nice sturdy template. I love that idea, Donna. Thank you so much for sharing that. It's a great idea. Okay, so then we're going to take one of these sprigs. Oh, shoot. I don't think I have my... Oh, I do have my scissors. Oh, dear. It's my ribbon scissors, but I'm just going to have to use it anyway. So I'm just cutting one of these sprigs in half. All right. And then I've got my scotch tape right here. I made sure it was on my table before this started. Because how many times have you guys seen me run to the other side of the room because I don't have it handy? All right, so then we're just going to take our little sprigs and we're going to put some up here in the upper right part of this oval just so that they're peeking out a little bit. Flip that over and then we're just going to tape that in like that. So we've got our little three little sprigs here at the top and then we're going to take these two sprigs and just kind of just follow that line, that sort of diagonal line that goes through the oval, and we'll put those right here. So again, I'm flipping it over, and again, just because it's so easy, I'm just going to use some scotch tape to attach that. All right, so now let's go ahead and put this all together. It's super easy from this point forward. So we need some Daffodil Delight cardstock which I've cut at five and a half by eight and a half and scored at four and one fourth. And on the inside panel, we have designer series paper from the Bird Ballad. And there's this one with all these little, um, little bird tracks. And so that's the one I used and it's Daffodil Delight. So that obviously was my inspiration for this. And so I have a half inch by five and a quarter inch strip and that is what we're going to use to decorate our inside. Since I have my glue all prepped and ready to go, I'm just putting a little line of glue here and we're gonna set this in right here on the left side just so that the front side carries over to the inside of your card. All right, and then the rest will just leave blank so we can make this kind of an any occasion card depending on what we wanna do. Then I took those same little bird tracks and I have a two and three fourths inch strip of it. I always go, well not always, but a lot of times if I'm going to be going flush to the edges of my card, I like to have that strip of paper longer so that I can cut it flush. Because sometimes no matter how accurately you try to measure something, it doesn't always measure up. And even though you may cut it at five and a half, it may be a little short, it may be a little long. And so this just makes it easier whenever you're going from one edge to the other, just make it a little longer and then trim it even with your scissors. And of course, I don't have, I see it, it's on the other side of the room. I'm gonna run grab my, my scissors so I don't have to keep using my ribbon scissors. You know, I thought, I really thought I was more prepared today, but I still had a little oops up. All right, so 
but you know what? Who would you guys be watching? If I just did it perfectly, you wouldn't even know who that was. You'd be thinking, where did Kay go? So, so I have to run across to the other side of the room because that's like, that's like, you know, something I do. All right, so we're gonna take, um, we're gonna take our glue, and now this is how I know where to start and stop the glue. So I'm just putting it on here. And that way, I only go as far as I need to. So you don't need glue down here because we're actually going to trim that. So that makes a good little handle for my designer series paper. I'm going to flip that around. And I suppose maybe a half inch to three quarter inches from the left side. Just press that in. You can always uh, use your grid paper. Just make sure that's nice and even. Kind of make sure that's flush. I love to use glue because of course then I can wiggle it a little bit and make sure it's perfect. I'm not very good with the, um, what do you call this, the snail here because that doesn't give me the wiggle room that glue does. Then I have downline members that just laugh at me and they say, oh my gosh, Kay, I cannot use glue because then I end up having glue on myself, my clothes, everywhere on the desk. <laughs> and that's just funny because I just think glues, you know, the cat's meow. I can do anything with glue. But I have a harder time with snail because I can't move it. Once it's down, it's like down for good. Unless you barely tack it down. All right, so here was the little trick. I just took my regular old paper scissors, cut that little um, edge off, and there we go. Perfectly matched from edge to edge. Then we're just gonna take our beautiful little parakeet here. Doesn't he look so cute? All right, so we're just gonna add a little glue to the back of this. And then we'll set him down. Oh my gosh, how adorable. We'll just wiggle that into place so it's perfect. And there we go. All right, so there it is. The card is complete. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing that card and how to create it. Now we're going to move on to the next card that we're creating with this uh, Facebook Live which is this one. All right, so this I did a little stamping in advance, so let me share with you. Okay, so here's my supply bucket. Ooh, if that's not scary, I don't know what is, because look at all those supplies. <laughs> oh, geez. All right, so what do we all have in here? Well, we have, first thing, something you probably can't even see. It's a window sheet, just a scrap piece of window sheet that I like to keep handy for watercoloring. I have the um, thinner watercolor, the aqua pen. Stampin' Up sells a pair of aqua pens. The bigger one is great for doing watercolor washes in the background, but the smaller one is really nice for doing detailed watercoloring, which is what I'll be doing today. Um, then we have all of our colors, so we're gonna start with Soft Suede, we'll, we'll, we'll move on to Mossy Meadow. We have Calypso Coral. We have Smoky Slate, and we'll finish it up with Pool Party. We also are going to be using a couple of Stampin' Right markers or Stampin' Markers. Um, one of these is Basic Black, and the other one is Smoky Slate. And this is part of the Neutrals Marker Pack, or if you want to, you could get the many Marvelous Markers. Um, and, of course... We are also going to be using Stazon ink because this is um, a very permanent ink, so you don't have to worry about any movement with it. And we'll be stamping that onto the watercolor paper. And, you know, I did pre-stamp this because I was like, you guys, I just, I can't do everything. I couldn't, I couldn't have it all set up. I have other things on my, on my Stamparatus plates. Um, but what I did is I actually stamped it on a scrap of watercolor paper and then I cut it out with the nested labels dies with uh, my die cutting machine and there it is. So now we're ready to go ahead and do something with that. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the soft suede ink and for those of you that have re-inkers you can just take your re-inkers and do a drop on the lid. However, if you don't um, happen to have re-inkers for every single color, you can take your thumbs and going to the back side of the stamps pad, which is a little softer than the front. The top is really hard, but if you take the back part and you push in with your thumbs, it has a little bit of movement. And then when you open it up, 
you can see that you get a pooling of color. So I'm going to take that and I'll use my, oh, and then the other thing we've almost forgot here. You need a paper towel, a folded paper towel, because that's what we'll do our, uh, you want to control your water so you don't have too much water um, on your pan. So what I do first is I just grab a little color off the uh, stamp pad here, and then I just dot it onto my paper towel so that initially that burst of water that comes out from the end is going to go onto the paper towel. Then I can go in and start, see how fine of a line you get with this um, aqua pen? Then I can go in and just start coloring this branch here. And so that is, again, using our, what is this called again, soft suede ink. And here's another little branch coming up here. So I did this really, really lightly. And then what you can do to add some depth or some detail, you can go back in, grab another little bit of ink, take off that little edge, and then you can go back and wherever there's like hash marks, on your image, you can go back in and color over the top of those particular places and you get a little bit more definition to your water coloring. So I'll just hold that up so you can see that because you probably couldn't actually even see that. But you can see that when you go back in with that color the second time, you get some, some more definition. All right, so that, I think that's all we need to do is soft suede. So we'll put that aside. And I just to assure you, I'm not going to do the whole thing because I, somewhere on my desk, I do have one that's pre-colored. But I do want to show you every color that I'm using and kind of the steps of how this goes. So then the next thing that I used is my Mossy Meadow. Just open it up because I've already prepped this. Now to get that excess color out of your pen, you can just go like this back and forth on your paper towel. You can give your, your barrel of your aqua pen just a little bit of a squeeze. And when it's all clear, then you're, then you're ready to go on to your next color. So I'm going to take some of the Mossy Meadow and we can go in and color these leaves. Whoops. See what I did there? I forgot to... I forgot to go in and take that initial burst of color off, and so that leaf is pretty dark. There we go. So we have some leaves. So I'll just I'll just color a few just so you can get the gist of how this goes. It's it's so easy. So for those of you that have never colored with aqua pens, it's so easy and they're so portable because the water is inside the pen and as long as you have a paper towel, you can dab off any excess water onto your paper towel and always have super control with your water pens. So sometimes you don't want to be super controlled. You kind of want to make it look more watercolory and a little more loose. The easiest way to do that is to go fast because then you're going to go outside the line and it's going to be more of a watercolored look. I'm letting a little bit of my perfectionism come through right now where I'm not doing that. And I also want to go slow so you can kind of see the process. But there's some leaves that I've colored. I think they turned out really nice. All right, so then again, we're going we're gonna to go now to the flowers. So again, like I said, I'm not going to do the whole thing. It would take forever. Well, not forever, but it would, it would really make this video go a lot longer. So now we're going to do Calypso Coral. We're going to go in, grab some color, and again, take that initial dab off, and then go in and color now I, I'm a little, my pen's a little too dry. So when that happens, go ahead, tow your paper towel and just give it a little bit of a squeeze, getting some water through to the end. Then we'll go in here, dab it off, and then we'll, we'll redo that one because it got a little dry on me. But that's one of the nice things about watercolor, uh, aqua pens rather, is you have so much control all right, so here, so you can kind of see how the flowers go. And again, if you want to add a little more definition, a little more um, depth to them, 
just go in with a little tiny bit of water and you can go in and wherever the centers of the flowers are, you can add a little bit of extra color and it just looks so cool. It gives that flower sort of like a two-dimensional look instead of just being really flat looking. All right, so there's, there's that. So what's the next color here? Well, chickadees. I um, have loads of chickadees uh, right outside my window. There's tons of chickadees here in Minnesota. We see them all the time. And so to create the chickadee, um, you want to have the basic black marker and I'm just going to color that onto my acetate sheet. And then I've also got my smoky slate because I'm going to be using that as well. So I'm going to make sure I have all the clips of coral out of my pen. Then I'm going to pick up just a little bit of the black marker. And we're going to color the cap of the chickadee with the darker color of black here. do that because I've got enough on my enough in my aqua painter that I can do a couple of them here and then what I'm going to do is once I have all the caps colored then I go in with the smoky slate and we're going to we're going to go ahead and do the wings and the body, just add, just go in kind of where the um, shadows are. Um, whoops, I didn't do quite everything here that I meant to show you with the black. So I'm going to go back to the black, and we've got to do his little, all the chickadees here in Minnesota have, well, and then, anyway, if you just Google a chickadee, they have this little bib. And so we need to create that little bib on the chickadee as well. So just go in and make that little bib. And that is also very dark, like the cap. So I'll do that once more so you can see, because that's really distinctive of a chickadee. So they have the black cap, and then they have that little black bib, just like this. And you can, I mean, these little birds can be just anything, but I wanted them to be little chickadees. There, that just makes them look like chickadees. Don't you guys agree? Let me hold this up to the camera so you can see. Isn't that awesome? And then of course, just to fill in, if you have a little black left, you can go in like a, where the wings are and just add a little bit of darkness to the wings or to the tail. But you want the bulk of the rest of the chickadee as far as um, color because the front of them, they're kind of pale through the front, but you wanna go with the smoky slate. The smoky slate is just the perfect chickadee color as far as the other parts of the chickadee, the parts that aren't black. And then of course, if you want to add some accents to those areas, you can go in with the black. Oh, this is so much fun. So that's how you do the chickadees, because I know some of you are very curious how that worked. Then, of course, to finish out the chickadee, I'm going to take my smoky slate marker and I'm going to use the fine tip end. And that's where you go in and you color the little beak with the very tip of the smoky slate marker because chickadees have dark colored beaks. They aren't, they aren't orange or yellow. Um, then to kind of give a little bit of a sky look because you... You know, most chickadees sit in pine trees or the branches of deciduous trees, and they do a lot of flying through the sky. So we need to grab our pool party and put kind of a sky background. So I'm just going to squeeze out a little water because I want this to be nice and light. And then you go in and you're just going to outline all of these images. So we're outlining the branch and the leaves and the flowers and you just go all the way around the image with just sort of a soft pool party wash everywhere and that is sort of your final beautiful touch to this uh, watercolor so you can see how that would look and you just go ahead and you do that all the way around 
all of your images, you know, I think my chickadee hair is dry enough that I can show you. If you'd wait, if you wait until everything is dry, it works a little better because if you go in too fast with your background, you're going to um, possibly run some of those colors and you don't want that. So that is, in a nutshell, how to color this image and have them look like chickadees. So let me show you one that I did in advance because I didn't quite want to do all of the coloring, but I felt like if I did some of it, you guys would see. Um, so here's one that I completed just before the video started. And isn't it gorgeous? Oh goodness, the colors just pop and it's so much fun. So what we're gonna do now, let me grab all of the card pieces here and we're gonna put this card together. So of course we need our card base and this is Calypso Coral. It's four and a quarter by 11 inches, scored at five and a half. And then we have a three and three fourths inch strip of the little bird cages. That's part of the Bird Ballad Designer Series paper. Here's the pretty feathers on the back side. That would look nice too. But we're gonna stick with the bird cages because I sort of like this tone on tone look that we're achieving. And again, I did cut it a little longer because we're going from edge to edge. So let me go ahead and set this down. So again, I'm gonna set this here and then I kind of know where the glue goes. Just make a little a rectangular line of glue, flip this over and we're gonna set this right in the middle. There we are. Move this down a little bit and all of this looks so great. All right, then we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna trim that edge so it's nice and flush with our card front. I'm sorry guys, I just haven't looked a lot at the comments. Um, very sorry about that, but you know what? I had to concentrate. I was doing watercoloring today, so makes me keep my eye on the project. All right, oh, you guys are so nice. I'm so grateful for all of your comments. And of course, once you comment or share this video and let me know that you've shared, you get in on the drawing that I'll do on Monday. So I did take another nested label and I cut it out with mossy meadow paper. And what I'm gonna do is just cut that in half. And then we're gonna add that as an accent to the back side of our image panel here. So I can flip that over, add a little scotch tape, because I know that's exactly where I want it. Then I can flip that back. We'll add a little glue here. Press that down and then that's in place. Now we'll do the same thing to the other side. So I'm gonna put this in so it is even with this one and looks about the same. Then I flip it over and without moving it, I'm just going to tape this in place. Then I can flip this up, add a little glue, flip it back, and then that label is in place. All right, there it is. Oh my gosh, that is so gorgeous. Then, of course, we, um, did I forget my, well, you know what, I think I did. I don't think I have all of my pieces, but that's okay. I'm gonna show you on the original card. On the original card, I took a 3 fourths inch by five and a quarter inch panel of the bird cages, just coordinated that to the inside panel of the card. I don't have it here, but if you are the winner of this card on Monday, you can be assured that your card would have this strip in. I just somehow did not prep that for the Facebook Live. but So my apologies, but it's kind of obvious that that's not so hard to do. Then we're gonna flip this over. We're gonna add some dimensionals to it because there's really not much left to do to creating this card. It's all pretty easy from this point forward. So we'll just add a few dimensionals here, maybe one in the middle. Take off all the little PLEs. And then we're gonna just add this right into the center of our card. So we're gonna flip that over. I think what I love about this card is the beautiful contrast with that, 
with that label that's been um, accented with the mossy meadow. And it looks so good against the Calypso Coral. Wouldn't you guys agree? It just it's so gorgeous. Then, because I love adding a little touch of embellishment, I'm going to take the, the Mossy Meadow Magnolia Lane thread here. And we're just going to make a little tiny bow. Oh dear, my fingernails are getting in the way. So I like to make a big bow. <laughs> And then once I've made it nice and big, we can make it little tiny. So, boy, I'm just all fingers today. That doesn't usually happen. I'm usually pretty good and quick at making bows, but there we go. All right, so I made kind of a big bow, and now I'm making it little. And honestly, I would fuss with this longer if I wasn't on video, because I think, oh my gosh, that's way too much to waste, but I'm not going to try to redo this. Um, but you know, normally I probably would have. All right. So here's our cute little bow. It just adds so much. I can't even tell you. I don't know what it is about these little tiny touches that you add to cards and how it just, just makes it, it just makes it so much more extra special. So I've got my take your pick tool here. I love using that for grabbing glue dots off my glue dot roll. Then I can kind of just little bit of squishing here at the end where the glue dot is and we're just gonna set that in right here and then we'll take our little bow and we'll just drop that on right there doesn't that look cute you guys all right so there we have it we have our beautiful little chickadee card Here's the original one. The original one, I had watered down my pool party considerably compared to this one, but they're both beautiful. Um, this one actually shows up better on camera, I think. Then we have our sweet little parakeet card here. And that's what we did. So again, as I mentioned, I'll do the drawing on Monday. Thank you everybody for joining me today. It's been a blast having you here. I truly appreciate it.